Hello, my name is Pablo Kabir, and I'm a product manager and software developer at Felixo. Today, I would like to demonstrate how we can build a dynamic report of general ledger transactions by using the new generic inquiry functions introduced in Velixo 5. Before Velixo 5, the maximum level of granularity that we could reach with GL reporting was at the scale of financial periods. However, using the new GI function, we can tap into any generic inquiry whatsoever and nothing prevents us from reporting at the transaction level anymore. Now, since this is an advanced usage scenario, the inquiry that we'll be using is not included into the Velixo pack by default, but you'll be able to download it using a link posted to this video's description. Let's begin by importing the generic inquiry into Acumatica. Search for generic inquiry. We open the generic inquiry screen. Click on the clipboard button. Select import from XML. Locate the generic inquiry XML file. As a reminder, you can find the download link in the description to this video. We attach the file and upload it. Okay, it's been imported successfully. Let's review the tables, relations, and the results grid tabs in the imported inquiry. As you can see, it queries individual transaction lines from the system. And it returns the columns that are likely to be of reporting interest, such as account, posting period, debit and credit amounts, the user who recorded the transaction, the module, the batch number, etc., etc. Let's now click View Inquiry to review the inquiry results in Acumatica. There we go. Let's return back and make sure that make visible on the UI and expose via OData flags are both checked for the inquiry. Otherwise, the Elixir GI function will not be able to access it. Now let's start building our transaction report in Excel using Velixo. Create a new Excel workbook if needed and set up a Velixo connection in the connection manager. In my case, the connection has already been set up. We will be using a connection named demo in this example. The upper left corner of the worksheet, range B3 through C4, will host our variable report parameters, the financial period range and the account range, both inclusive. Let's type period, account, from, to. Make things bold a bit and say parameters. So let's suppose we're interested in reporting starting in December 2019. By the way, make sure that you have this little apostrophe sign in front of your financial period ID. Otherwise, Excel might try to convert this value into a daytime representation, which we don't want. So starting from December 2019 and through, again, apostrophe May 2020. There we go. Now the account range will be from 10,100 through 10,300. Next, to properly filter by financial period, we need to reformat the financial periods to match the Acumatica internal format. For example, this human readable representation like 12-2019 will need to be formatted as 
2019-12. We will use the Excel's built-in right and left functions for that purpose, placing the formatted period range into cells H3 and H4. Let's do it. Say formatted starting period, formatted ending period. And we'll use H3 and H4 for the parameters value. Okay, let's write our formula. We want to take cell B3 and of that we want to take the rightmost symbols, the rightmost four symbols, and we'll concatenate it with the two leftmost symbols, B, 3, we we'll take two symbols from the left. So this should produce 2019, 12. Let's verify. Yes, it does. Now we'll repeat the same for the second value. Just make sure we change the formula from B3 to C3. Okay. After that, in the cell B6, we'll use the GI filter function to prepare the filter clause for our generic inquiry. Let's say filter, select the cell B6, and we'll write our formula. GI filter, the connection name is demo, the inquiry name is GL detail, and we need to apply the filtering criteria per column. I want to say that the post period is greater than or equal to concatenate it with the parameter value residing in the cell H3 okay it's the it's our formatted starting period The second criteria is we should restrict it from above. We type in the same column name saying post period is less than or equal to our ending period, okay, which is located in the cell H4. And we also want to restrict it by the accounts range. So we say account, the criteria value is greater than or equal to this value. Let me make sure that I have the dollar signs here. And again, restricting from above, the accounts should be less than or equal to the cell C4. Let us review the GI filter formula. The connection is demo, the inquiry is GL detail, the post period is bounded by the values of the cells H3 and H4, and the account value should be bounded by the parameters provided by the cells B4 and C4. Okay. As you can see, the formula has produced a valid OData filter clause that we can use in the GI function. Now, as you might have noticed, the inquiry contained quite a few columns in the results grid, but probably not interested in all of them. So, in the cell B7, let us specify 
the inquiry columns that we would like to be included into the report. So in our case, that would be transaction date, module, batch number, post period, account, description, let's say debit, credit, and the GL amount. Now, before we move on, we need to talk about caching. By default, Velixir uses the full table caching strategy, which means that it basically fetches the whole data set from the generic inquiry, and it then applies any filters that you specified locally. This is a reasonable default for most scenarios, but some inquiries, including the one we operate upon, are very heavy. Loading all GL transactions, especially in larger companies, over the network can take quite a bit of time. So before requesting data from the inquiry, we'll tweak the generic inquiry options. On the Velixor ribbon, click the Options button. In the Options pop-up window, observe that there is already a set of default options for the GL detailed generic inquiry. They were automatically created once we used the GI filter function. Let's click More, Edit, and in the Inquiries Options window, we'll set the Cache Mode to Filter Specific. We'll set the Refresh Mode to Smart Refresh. Now it asks us to configure the key fields, basically to specify a set of columns that allow us to uniquely identify any row within the data set, which is an easy task to do. We have the batch number, the module, and line number. We can ignore these key fields. Uh, this is just a suggestion, probably coming from a table join. The batch number, module, and line number would be enough. Just click OK. And now Smart Refresh will be supported. Velixo automatically suggests the date modified field for Smart Refresh. Actually, there are no other candidates for that. You should always specify the last modification date field for a Smart Refresh field. It could either be the last modification date or the timestamp column. To reiterate what we've just done, we'll ensure that the initial data load will be faster because as opposed to fetching all transactions and applying filters locally, Velixa will only fetch those transactions that match the current GI filter value. This happens at the cost of additional network requests when you change the filtering parameters, but we're okay with that. Because of smart refresh, we'll also have faster update times. When you refresh the report, smart refresh will ensure that instead of reloading the whole inquiry result set over the network, Velixa will only incrementally load new transactions based on the date modified field value. Just to be clear, manually tweaking GI options is not something you will be likely to do on a regular basis. For most smaller inquiries, the default caching and refreshing options provided by Velixo will work just fine. Now that we have the GI options set up, let us load the inquiry data and finalize the report. In the cell A9, We'll use the GI function. The connection name is demo. The inquiry name is GL detail. The next parameter is called filter. We'll reuse what GI filter gave us. So we we'll specify the cell B6. And the select arguments allows us to specify the columns that we want to pick out of the result set. We also have that prepared in the cell B7. The last parameter, include header, allows us to specify whether we want to include the header into the result set. By default, it's true, and we'll make things explicit and also say true. Okay, the transactions are loaded.
Finally, let's make sure that our report looks nice. Let's expand the transaction date column. Observe that it's currently being formatted as number, which is probably not what we want. Let's format it as date. Okay. Let's expand the other columns, including the amounts. And make sure that the amounts are also formatted properly. There we go. Your report is ready. You can now try changing the account range. For example, currently the report doesn't contain a lot of transactions, but we can try including more accounts. It takes quite a while to load them. But it does eventually. As you can see, my scroll bar has become really small. There are lots and lots of transactions from different modules posted to all, all those accounts. We can also expand the period range, but I don't want to do it in the scope of this video because it will become long. So enjoy your report. Uh, you can download the sample report that we'll be working on for reference, the link is also attached to the video description. You will still need to add a demo connection, set up the inquiry in your Acumatica instance, and update the generic inquiry options according to the above steps. Have a nice day.